Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks. This is part two of the Creeper Blanket and this is my template. Now, if you haven't found part one already, I'll put a little link, it'll appear up here um, and it will show you where you can download this free template and any other free patterns that you want from my website. Um, so then the, obviously that is part one and it kind of goes into how many squares you need and everything else. So, but this is the joining of those squares. Now this is how I'm joining them. I've so far done this row and I'm up to this square here along this row and I'm just joining them one at the time. Now this is a invisible join that I have used before and it is a join that is really a knitting join. Um, there are variations of that join, the mattress stitch, on uh, in many crochet tutorials, but that mine is very similar to the knitted version of the mattress stitch. Now, as I said, I'm up to this one here, but I won't show you how to join that one because it's very difficult to join, um, to see the joining of the black. Um, it is the hardest one to work on when you're making the squares or when you're joining them. So I won't do that one because I want you to be able to see um, what I'm doing, obviously. So I'm going to join, um, where am I up to? These two squares here. This would be the next one up. I've kind of come along here and I'm up to this one. So this would be the next bit in that corner. So I'm just going to join these two squares and show you how uh, I do that. So for that, I've already done all my ends, tucked all my tails away. So, you know, that's one good thing. Now, the yarn itself, they are all the same size, but some of them look a little bulkier, but that does all work out once they're all joined. So that's not a problem. So I've got my darning needle. Now, all you need to do to make my invisible join is use one of the colours that are involved in the squares you're joining. You know, cool if you're doing two the same colour, but if you're not, as long as the colour that you're using is one of them, then you shouldn't see any part of it at all. So we thread um, a knitting or crochet darning needle, whichever we want to call it, and I'm going to start with this one because I'm, I'm, I want to start with the colour that I'm using. It doesn't matter too much, but what you want is the corner. So we've got two, the chain and two. So I'm going to go into that corner and I'm going to go. If you look, if you were crocheting, then you would be going into these parts here to pick up that stitch. But I'm going in between it. So what you want to do is you want to look at the V and you want to go in and come back up in the next stitch through that. So you're going into the actual V. Now you need to leave quite a nice size tail for sewing in. And then we'll get our next one and we find exactly the same part. So there we are, we're going in and out. So obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going a bit dry there. We are kind of working we're putting them side by side, so they're both right side up. So whereas you were pulling that forward, this time round, you can see it quite quite clearly. So we are going in exactly the same, into that one, and up through the next. Now we don't want to pull it tight. Let's get the tail out the way. I don't want it to tangle which it's doing, didn't do that on any of the ones. Oh my goodness. Let's get rid of the tail. There we go. I usually just, because I usually do it in my hand like this, then I'll hold on to that as I'm sewing. I'll show you what I mean. Now that I've got them together, there's my tail. And this is my, my working yarn. I pull that down and I hold on to it. So now it's gone completely out of the way. I'm holding on to it at the back, but you can do that if you want. Just keeps it out of the way and stops it from getting in the way to tangle. Right, let's show you how we proceed then. So now we have gone in 
in that corner stitch in the green first and then we've come up through the lighter green so now we're going to go into the same one let me just zoom a little bit i'm going to try and zoom but not make sure i won't zoom why will you not zoom there we go okay so there we are we're going to go into the same stitch this is the one it's coming out of we're going to go into there and up through the next so you're catching that part of the stitch and we'll pull it now we're going to go in remember that that's just the tail this is where it's come out of we're going to go in there and up through the next one and we want to leave it as if we're lacing up a pair of sneakers or trainers whatever you want to call them so it's left with a nice wide um open it doesn't look right i know but leave it open for now like a lace between the two so this is the one it's coming out of we're going to go into there and up through the next one and then we're going to go back to this one this is the one it's coming out of so we're going in there and up through the next one <clears throat> and again the next side and we're just going to do that all the way along going into the one we've just come out of and up through the next one and then what we want to do once we've gone a certain distance is we'll lay it flat and holding this side i'm going to pull on this one i don't want to pull on them both just yet because this is a long tail you can pull on them both but so i will do that now pull on them both and now that is completely taut and it's pulled these two edges together but if you pull on them both then this one just gets very long and sometimes you haven't left yourself enough yarn to sew up so that's what you want to make sure at all times that you have enough yarn to actually make it to the end don't go playing yarn chicken with this because it can be quite a stress if you do that's the one we come out of it's always difficult to see that um especially in the black when you've pulled it so that's why you know you want to make sure you're going the right one and up through the next again that's the one it's coming out of you can see it coming out there so we're going into that one and up through the next and again we're lacing it i'm keeping that nice and wide of course it's nice and easy to see the one on the opposite side um, because the color ch is different so that's kind of nice we're going in and up through the next one of course it's much easier when you don't have a camera in the way okay so you get a few inches up or don't leave it too long then we'll put this over that side and with my finger on the bit that's already closed i just pull and then i can give both a little tug make sure it's nice and snug now it does look like it pulls it but it does work out just don't tug it too hard as long you're just looking to join it not to um to stretch it in any way so then we're going to do the same all the way across now in the past i've used this join and i maybe have made all of one side i'll get my diagram joining these here so i'm left with a long strip which oh, hang on i forgot i'd zoomed sorry let's come out okay i'll start again so in the past i've joined each one at this point so i've got nice long strip looks like a scarf only miniature so then i would do the same again with this one all the colors that i need and then i would just join the whole lot but for this blanket i've decided i'm going to do one at a time so this is a start and an end this would be a start and an end it's a lot of ends to sew i know but a start and an end a start and an end you know i'm just doing it one at a time and the reason for that is that this is for tyler my grandson and that blanket that i'm making will be dragged around it will be taken everywhere it will be 
herded with lots of others. He loves his blankets and he will use that blanket <laughs> um, every day. And it will need to stand up to quite robust treatment, really. Now, if it's just going to go over a, a tiny baby and never move, that's fine. But this is going to need to be as secure and um, as strong as it can possibly be. So I'm just doing one at a time. That way, should any come open, it's a quick and easy repair rather than a long, drawn-out repair. So that's why I'm doing that anyway. So you can, if you want to, do the whole side, um, join it in any way you like. But I, I'm for this, it's taking longer to do it this way. But I just think it's going to be safer all round to do one at a time for this particular project. And of course, you can do whichever join you want. I've got uh, the tail got involved then. OK, so I've got a little bit further. Just pull it and you can see it all meets together quite nicely. We're nearly at the end. And this is one of the ends that I've sewn in from when I ended. So it gets a little bit messy at that point. So um, you just carry on, carry on um, going up in the same way, all the way to the end. And then once you get to the end, you just want to secure the yarn on the reverse side and uh, sew in your ends. It's quite um, as simple as that. But that's it, basically. And all you do is sit there with your diagram in front of you making sure you go with the right colours and you join the right ones at the right time. Um, once you've completed the whole thing, it is then um, time for border. And all I'm going to do is a few rows in a contrasting kind of green colour um, to make a, a nice sort of little finish, little finished border. And the reason I'm going to do that is because at some stage, this is the last one. So I grab both my ends and give it a little little tug. That's all done nicely. For some reason, that's not pulling. Hang on a minute. Maybe I'm going to undo that last one. It's For some reason, it's stopping it from, from pulling out. It's quite easy to undo one. Okay, is that better? Yes, it is. Must have just got caught up in the knot there. It's quite simple to take it out. So all you've got to do now is sew the ends in. So um, you can give it a little tug if you want, just to make sure that there's no slack. And there you've got your invisible join. So it just butts them up nicely. Now on the reverse, it makes a little ridge. But again, it's quite quite invisible. You can just about see a little bit of yarn here and there. But because it's one of the colours, it is more or less invisible. So, yeah, all you've got to do now is grab a needle. I've got two, so I can do one end and then the other. And then we just secure the ends in. So what I like to do is I'm up through the centre one here. There's my centre one there. Just go in there. Pull them together nice and snug. And then I turn it over and then I'm going to, it's very difficult to sort of manoeuvre it how I want. I'm just going to make sure I keep that nice and tight. There we go, I pull it nice and tight. And then once I'm there, I go through there to make a little knot. And for security, because I know the boy that this is for, I will do another little knot. And then I'll just feed this through the green and then I will sew it back and forth through my corner. So um, just a case of tracing this down. Burying it in there. And then I'll come through here. Go through this corner because that's where the maximum amount of stitches are and then once I've got it through there I will go back 
but making sure I go for a different part of the yarn. See, it's come out of there and I'll ignore that one and go through this one so it catches it. And do it again on this side. Just go through over that last one. And this time, once I've pulled it through, I'll give it just a little tug so that the end disappears inside that corner and then it can be just sort of smoothed out and it's gone but you've got the nice edge where you can't really see the join but of course you can join your squares however you want to but all you need to do is make sure you sit with your diagram and if you if it's going to be used robustly I would recommend just doing one corner one one side at a time finishing at corners rather than doing a whole long line but if it's for an adult and it's not going to be um it's not going to be as i like to call it tailored then um you can do them in a, a nice long line and then another nice long line and join the whole line but it's entirely up to you so that's it that's basically how i'm joining this blanket um i've got a long way to go it is quite tedious and time consuming but you know rome wasn't built in a day anyway if you haven't already don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell i'm just going to do a simple border as you can see this has just got like a little kind of khaki colored edge to it and that's what i'm going to replicate i'm just going to do a couple of rows of uk double crochets which is a single crochet in the us all the way around because what i might do at a later stage is make another one which is maybe the pig and then um another one which is the man just to take a few characters and just once i've got them all together there's nothing to stop me then joining each one of these together for to make a a, a blanket for a bed but if they're all the same amount of squares and stitches and the border is all the same it should be easy to just join them all together to make a larger blanket for a bed when he's a bit older okay thank you for watching and i hope um, that's been informative for you but as i said if it was if that's not the join for you then you can join them any way you want really as long as it's a join that enables you to join two colours together. I do have quite a lot of joins on my channel and I will put a few of those at the end um, if I can find them. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.